This week, we take the Cigar Dojo to the mat, as it were. In the debonair ideal for this week, we're going to talk about Corojo and give Will a little quiz about Corojo. Stogies of the week, I talk about Avo Classic Covers, and Will talks about tangling, I guess. All that and more, so stay tuned. Every new blend borrows from the past in the Saga Blend number 7. It is a perfect combination of timeless knowledge of traditional tobaccos and the newer balance that today's cigar enthusiasts come to expect and love in a fine cigar. Leveraging six generations of experience and tradition of the Reyes family, the Saga Blend number 7 delivers a unique, full-flavored, medium-bodied cigar. The cigar is highlighted by a Brazilian wrapper over a blend of Central American and Dominican tobacco. Available in three sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Blend Number no. 7 is sure to please and bring together past and present. Paying homage to the mecca of tobacco, Pinar del Rio, Cuba, Abe Flores opened his PDR Cigar Factory in the Dominican Republic over 10 years ago. Abe is one of the hottest boutique cigar makers in the industry today, earning the number 10 spot on Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of 2014 with the Abe Flores 1975 Siri Pravada. Abe and his team use Cuban blending traditions in a modern boutique Dominican factory. Smoke PDR cigars and cut, light, and taste what they love to do. From the makers of the number one cigar in the U.S. in 2013, the Aging Room Quattro F55 comes yet another highly rated cigar, the Aging Room Bin Number 1. The Aging Room Bin Number 1 is a full-bodied Dominican cigar with some of the world's oldest tobacco on the market today. From the harvest of 1997, 98, and 99, the Aging Room Bin Number 1 starts out smooth and builds up in strength and flavor until it reaches its full potential. The Aging Room Bin Number 1 is for the true cigar connoisseur looking for a sophisticated smoking experience with balance, complexity, and character. Aging Room Cigars. Blending is in our DNA. Partagas, since its introduction in 2014, Partagas 1845 Extra Fuerte has won critical acclaim and a devoted legion of fans. Flawless construction and full-bodied flavor are the hallmarks of this rich, dimensional cigar that features prevalent notes of wood and coffee. Made with a unique blend spanning three continents, Partagas 1845 Extra Fuerte is the perfect choice for any cigar smoking occasion. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode 163. Did I get that right? Well, it's 163. 163. I hope so, because that's what I labeled all my stogies for this week. So that segment's coming up last. Um, but first, I want to introduce my illustrious co-host, Mr. Will Cooper. What's up, Will? Hey, Paul. How's it going today? Hey, you know, it's going good coming off the heels of our four-year anniversary show, which was... Uh, a lot of fun, and I dressed like a pimp, so, I mean, you should yeah. totally check out those videos. If you're just listening to the audio, you definitely want to check out the videos, especially if you're a fan of my chest hair, which has now become infamous, so. Yeah, you know, yeah, there were some comparisons I've seen drawn of you of some characters, so I'll let people be the judge. It was I, a, big I heard, hit, a big hit on yeah. Facebook. I changed my profile picture to that on Facebook, and there was a lot of... A lot of people, names you might recognize in the cigar industry, commenting on my outfit. So it was pretty entertaining. So, someone called you, um, who I know, Sweet Daddy Williams from Good Times. Yes, I um, am almost old enough to remember that show. Yeah, almost old enough, but yeah, I can see that. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah. So, Will, we're smoking uh, an interesting cigar, and I know sometimes we don't always pay enough attention and, and like smoke a cigar on the show and talk about it a lot on the show. It's kind of hard not to talk about this cigar. This is a very special cigar that I picked up at Casa Fuente in Las Vegas. Um, as when it came to local retailers, someone who will remain remain nameless, Walt, asshole, uh, bought the whole <laughs> box. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I, I found a couple at, um, uh, and I shouldn't say that because I've bought the whole boxes before and people get mad at me as we've talked about on the show before. Um, but I found a couple and I have to say, Will, I'm, I, I want to hold off my judgment until the end of the show 
But this very well could be an Oasis smoke that we're smoking right on the show tonight. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. You know, this, I tell you what, this band may be, this, this band may be one of the greatest cigar bands I've ever seen. It is, just, a, my, there's one word to describe this band, and that is epic. 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 I mean, yeah. And normally, you know, you hear stuff, all oh, blue cigar bands, this, just oh. blue is just, it. It is the it's most per- intricate, detailed band. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It is so yeah. cool. And you gifted this to me, and I really appreciate it because I've not had. Uh, this is what's smoking the. Um, do we want to say what we're smoking? Yeah, actually? so this is the Arturo Fuente Destino Al Siglo Gran Anniversario. Um, it is, of course, made in the Dominican Republic. Uh, it sports. The only thing I know about the wrapper and the binder, Will, is that it's Dominican Republic. They don't tell us what, what farm, what plant. What priming? Nothing like that. Uh, the filler has Dominican fillers, also United States and Nicaraguan fillers. Really? Yeah. Uh, and I'm getting this from Cigar Snob Magazine, which is a pretty reputable source. Um, so. Yeah. And we are um, smoking the Siglo de Amor, which is a five and a quarter by fifty Perfecto. Yes, I'm told this is the bell of the ball, <laughs> and I, I have smoked the Robusto, and I believe the Churchill in this blend. And definitely, Bell of the Ball is in this uh, day or more. Uh, I've smoked, it, the, yeah, I've smoked the Corona Gorda and the Robusto. Mm-hmm. This cigar is just amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I think we should towards the end because there's, um, yeah, this is this is incredible. Price tag ranges from uh, about twenty four to twenty seven dollars on these cigars, so they're not necessarily. Uh, your budget cigars, certainly, no. but no. they are uh, absolutely. I'm glad we should do this more often on the show. Smoke really awesome cigars like this. Yeah, when you when you, I was really grateful you sent this. It was a big surprise, and I said, "Well, you know, I think it would be great if Paul and I actually, if you and I smoked this together." Together, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because it wouldn't be fair to review one of these either. I was thinking, but on the show we could talk about it, and have some good discussion. I thought so. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, already, I mean, out of the gate. And this thing's burning unbelievable. I mean, it's burning pretty fast, but it's not burning hot. And this, there is a ton of smoke production. Oh, yeah, my garage is already smoking up. Yeah, nice. it's, uh, it's, I like that. I like that. Yeah. I think it can be over the top sometimes, but I do like a lot of smoke production. Yeah. Um, so that, that's cool. I'm glad, I'm glad we decided to do this. Um, Will, why don't you introduce our very special guest for this evening? Yeah, um, making his return to Stogie Geeks, we have Master Sensei Eric Gerkmanson of um, Cigar Dojo. Master hey, Sensei. What's up there, Will and Paul? How are you guys tonight, man? Good. How are you, Eric? Oh, so excited. Yes, it's very nice to have you back on the show, um, fellow uh, social media and uh, technology cigar person. It's, it's nice uh, to have that compliment uh, here on the show. And uh, I know, you know, I was thinking about before the show, Eric, um, your app is extremely popular and people really like it. And I know a lot of times I'm not able to find uh, cigar related apps for my phone. Uh, and yours always stands out. Of course, you know, I, I've met you personally and things like that. So I'm like, oh, I got to install the Cigar Dojo app. But um, how is the, the app going in the community that you've built around it? Well, uh, it just keeps just keeps growing. And um uh, we got a big announcement up about the app that I'm going to, I'll tell you later, but, okay. uh, as for right now, uh, it's great. You know, uh, tons of guys get on there. It's sort of like Twitter. If, if you've never used it, uh, for people out there that are watching that maybe have never used it, it's sort of like Twitter or Facebook, but for cigar smokers. And, um, there's a lot of other things. There's a shop locator and all that kind of good stuff as well. But the, the main uh, feature is the social timeline, and that's where guys just get on there and talk about their cigars, take pictures of their cigars, ask questions. Sometimes people be in the humidor at their local brick and mortar, and they'll say, you know, they'll get on the dojo and they'll take a picture, you know, should I buy this cigar or that cigar? And, you know, like 12 people will tell them, you know, so it's, it's really educational and fun, and it gets a little irreverent at night, which is fun. And uh, we do all kinds of crazy stuff. In fact... Tomorrow night, um, so we have our show too. It's called Smoke Night Live. It's not quite as cool as Stogie Geeks, but <laughs> we're, we're try, we try. And tomorrow night is our annual show where we will induct some of our uh, 
community members into the Dojo Hall of Fame. We do this every year, and there's, uh, you know, you got to be a, a real uh, integral cog of the dojo to make it into the Hall of Fame, but it's always fun and goofy and exciting. So we'll be uh, inducting some new members into the Dojo Hall of Fame tomorrow night. So and so what do, you, what do you get when you get inducted into the Hall of Fame? Do you get like a plaque? Do you get cigars? Do you get just recognition? Well, first and foremost, you get bragging rights. Yes, that's you know? big. No, that's big. That's big. And then, you know, we send, uh, this year we're sending some uh, De Crochet presidential gift packs. They're, I don't know, Will, maybe you've seen those. They're, uh, the coffins? With the, the coffins? coffins. Yeah, yeah, we, we gave away a few of those. <laughs> yeah, they're really, really cool. So uh, each, each inductee this year will be getting uh, one of those. In fact, this year, hey, Jordan, this year there's... Seven, right? Seven. There's, there's going to be seven inductees this year, which is more than normal. And then we're also inducting one of our subgroups uh, as a Dojo Hall of Fame subgroup. Because we have these sort of like subgroups that, that sort of have their own personalities on the dojo and meet up and all that kind of stuff. So that all goes down tomorrow, which should be uh, either really exciting or a train wreck. We'll see. I don't know. You know. No, uh, Eric, I have to say this. It's... It's absolutely uh, amazing that you do that, and uh, you know, knowing what little I know about uh, managing your tribe and social media presence and the, your followers for whatever you're doing, um, is that you, you really want to take that top one percent, two percent, three percent of your subscribers. I've heard it, you know, described as your tribe, and really keep them close and reward them. Uh, and it sounds like you're doing that, which is extremely smart. And those are the people that I'm sure that you lean on, right, to get feedback on features in your app, on, on cigars, and all kinds of feedback. So I think that's really great. Yeah, it's the guys that are uh, in one way. Like last year, um, Juan Cancel, Bill Ives, Simon. Uh, Will, you know Simon from Florida. Yeah, I met Simon. Yeah, I feel um, like I know. Yeah. Yeah, no, those 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 are the kind of guys. Jaleb, uh, a lot of guys know Jaleb. He's hilarious. So those are the sort of guys that they've gone the extra mile, so to mm. speak, and really helped the dojo along the way. Or maybe they're just, maybe they're just a part of the dojo that's like a cornerstone that everybody knows, and so eventually they get recognized. They've been on there for a long time. Some of these guys have made literally almost thirty thousand posts on the wow. dojo. Wow. 30,000. That's a dramatic portion of their lives. And we're just thankful that they would, uh, you know, spend so much time on our app. And so we want to recognize them. We could, we could induct 20 guys or ladies or whatever, but we try to like keep it, we try to keep it to five or six. And this mm -hmm. year it's seven. So, uh, in you're regularly reviewing cigars as well. Yeah, uh, we review cigars. In fact, uh, we just recently completely redid the Dojo website. I see so that. If you, if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, we're really nice. proud of it. It came out super cool. You know, it's our goal to just have, you know, we don't really, we do a little bit of news, not really. We leave that to Will because <laughs> he's <laughs> the man when it comes to news. You know, our thing is really the the reviews. And so our goal was, we just want our site to be to just make cigars look beautiful. And so that was the goal when we redid the site. We just said, hey, we want to feature the, the beauty and art of the cigars. So we completely redid the website to, to have a really cool artsy feel and just focus on the tobacco and the cigars themselves. Eric, do you have a background in, in photography as well? Your pictures are gorgeous. Well, you know, uh, most of the pictures are taken by the reviewers, and uh, uh, Jordan, he's our sort of our number one lead editor guy, uh, does a lot of those pictures. He's a really good photographer. I'm a graphic artist. I came from okay. the, some of the graphic arts mm -hmm. world and uh, social media and stuff. I do some work for NASCAR and some other companies that I can't mention that are sort of big, but... I do uh, some consulting in, in social media. So I kind of, I'm the kind of the guy that handles figuring out what we do. And then those guys, the reviewers, I do a few review, reviews myself. But I just got to I, I admit freely that I'm not as good at writing as Jordan and Ben and Jack and Matt 
And some of these guys are just, they're really good at what they do and they take great pictures. So uh, we let them do what they do best. And uh, we have a new rating system in the, in the mm-hmm. Dojo website, which is, is pretty slick. Um, so, uh, so yeah, if you get a chance, check out the new CigarDojo.com website. It came out, uh, came out pretty cool, I think. Yeah, it looks uh, great. Aaron, Thank tell you. us about your new rating system. What goes into your rating system? So the new rating system is just a, a little more it's, – it's the same as we had before, but now it's just more updated and slick, and it looks a lot better on a, a phone – you know, a smartphone and that kind of thing. And uh, viewers can still uh, rate it themselves as well. And uh, so it's just a percentage from 1 to 100, 100% being the best, just typical like cigars do. And see, we rate, Jordan, what do we have? We have uh, appearance. We have burn and construction, draw, flavor, complexity, and then overall price value. And then that makes up the, the, uh, the rating for each cigar. I think it's good that you put complexity in there. Um, I see a lot of people do not factor that in there, and I think that's a very yeah. important component. Yeah, I agree. You know, that's the interesting coup because some cigars have a ton of flavor, right? But and the flavor might be great, and that and they might get a hundred on flavor, but the cigar itself isn't very complex. There's not a a lot of flavors. There might be one really good note, right? And so. Uh, complexity, I think, is pretty important too. Plus, that sort of takes into account that the the cigar might progress as you smoke it, you know, and get better or worse depending on the cigar as you smoke it. So, complexity is a really important factor. What are some of the highest rated cigars <clears throat> on your site? Well, I'll tell you right now, the highest rated cigar on our site is a cigar that I can't get enough of right now, and that's that Don Ronaldo by Warped. That cigar oh. is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It got what a ninety six, Jordan. It got a yeah, ninety six. Yep. Got ninety six on our site, and that's the highest rating that we've ever handed out. And I instantly ran and bought some from JR Cigars. I, I I can't get enough of that stick. I know Will, you're a fan of that too, right? Yeah, you know, and I'll, I'll even make you feel worse though. The Corona that was kind of soft launched last year is even better. I mean, and that's a that the robusto they came out. It's very good. I mean, it's excellent. Um, it's one of my top ten cigars. But that Corona, I wish they'd bring that Corona back. It's even better. I had them. I had that Corona in San Antonio, and I uh, loved it as well. But um, man, I just God, I could smoke that thing every single day and be happy for the rest of my life. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That's I, a, that's I, Kyle Kyle Gellis of Warp Cigars, right? Right. Yeah, and, yeah. Kyle makes some uh, amazing smokes. I, I love the the warp cigars. Um, unfortunately, not a lot of the local shops around here carry that, so um, it kind of falls off my radar. So I'm glad you said that. I haven't smoked the Don Reynaldo. Is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't smoked that yet. It's not I cheap. Just, you know, it's no. ex, it's a. Uh, it, it, you can get it at a discount. In fact, if you use the if you use the Dojo coupon code and stuff, you can get it for like twelve bucks a stick. Mm-hmm. But it's typically more like 15 or so. Yeah. And um, so it's not cheap, but the nice thing about that cigar is it's good from beginning to end. And I typically don't nub sticks. You know, some guys yeah. will nub a stick like way down to the end. And I don't, I don't do that. That's not my thing. But um, I, with that cigar, I, I can do that. It's just good from the beginning to the, the very last little bit. And uh, by the way, I don't have anything to do with Warped. They, I just love that cigar. Mm. They're not a partner or anything, I, but that cigar is amazing. It's so good. What's little, what's different about that warp compared to the others is he's putting a touch of Dominican in that blend. Mm-hmm. So it's the only one of I think it's the only one of his cigars that's got Dominican in it. And, it's a, uh, it's got a Dominican Corojo wrapper. Speaking of Corojos mm. that you guys are talking about tonight, and so that's kind of unique. And it's yep. made it L Titan to bronze, so it's a great little factory down there in Miami and. Everything about that cigar is pure win, in my opinion. Nice. I can't wait what to try that. What else is good? Uh, what I'm smoking right now, I'm smoking this. This is interesting. You guys probably never heard of it. The ash just fell off, as I said that, but what? it was it's sticking on perfectly before that. But this is called the Bella Dominicana, and it's made in the Dominican Republic. And these are like these guys are unheard of, but one of the blenders on this is E.P. Carrillo. Hmm. And these things are really good. I've smoked about 
12 of these in the last month or so. And uh, it's kind of just out of nowhere. I don't even, uh, to be honest with you, I couldn't tell you right now where you could buy it. I could look it up, but um, these are really good. Uh, I've been smoking, um, oh, the El Wawense. That's yes. another one. That's another one that I've been excited about. Uh, I'm going to review uh, one of the uh, Wawense cigars uh, later on in the show. Oh, okay. That's a great stick. Yeah. Nick is a great guy. Yeah, we had him on the show, oh, I don't know, three weeks ago or four weeks ago or something, and and that was the first time I tried it. I really I really dug that thing. It was yeah. Really good. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, he did a great job with that cigar, and um, – it's just uh it's it's really funny when when Nick was on the show um we had one of our funniest moments ever on the Stogie Geek show and it's a a little like out, I I call it an outtake but it's actually part of the regular show and yeah. it's when Stogie Santa lost his cigar and came up with the term ass pressed mm -hmm. um we just posted that to our our social media sites and uh Nick is there for that and in the cigar that Stogie Santa sat on was an El Wayense and he, the what made it funny for me, f even funnier for me, was how pissed off Stokey Santa was that he lost his cigar. He's going, "This ain't funny." He's like, <laughs> he's like cursing and swearing. He's like, "I really, where did that cigar go?" And, and Nick, goes, Nick is being so nice. He's like, you, "You need another one," and he's like grabbing boxes, like ready to give him another one. <laughs> So, yeah, and then we had Mike Bellady on, and he's kind of needling him. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, Mike's just yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's one of those classic moments. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have uh, do questions for Eric? I didn't even have topics you wanted to talk about with Eric. Um. Yeah. So, Eric, as far as um, you know, one thing that you've done, I think, really well is you've come out with. I mean, you've had several cigar releases right now. Um, you've had one of my favorites, which was the Underground Dogma. Yeah. And then you also had um the Viaje Throwdown. Yeah. And how can we also forget Sasper Sasparillas? I mean, you have had three cigars, and, and they have all been excellent cigars that I would put in the box split, the box worthy range right now. Um, anything you. else you think coming out? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah we're working on stuff. Uh, in fact, Chinese, well, you forgot Chinese Finger Trap, no? Well, yeah, Chinese Finger Trap actually, it's not really a dojo cigar. Uh, it's it's. It's a cigar produced by Moya Ruiz. They do one every year that's uh, in homage to the dojo community because the dojo community kind of helped launch their brand. And so we do it with them in concert. But it's really their cigar because they go and they sell it to their retailers and all that stuff as well. And we don't, we don't have anything to do with the blending or, or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, that, the Chinese Finger Trap is a great cigar. Um, when they sent me that, that cigar was ass pressed by the post office the first time I got it. <laughs> and so I was like, oh man, Nelson, I can't smoke this on the show. It thinks it's flat. The post office had squished it flat, literally. I mean, it was flat. <sighs> That's but funny. I, but was, well, not, it, not funny for you at the time, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Because we're doing the show, right? And so, but I'm like, okay, well, I got to smoke it anyways. And so I smoked it flat and it was perfect. And I couldn't believe it. It tasted fantastic even though it was flat. So, so yeah, that came out good. But, yeah, the Dogma. Uh, we're going to Nicaragua on Monday to, uh, to go on Cigar Safari with the Drew Estate guys. And nice. uh, we're, we're really pushing to uh, maybe, you know, see if, if we can get them to do some more Dogma because that thing is, you know, it's sold out almost instantly, you know, within a couple hours. And, uh, and then, of course, the Sarsaparilla was a couple months later. Our thing is this. Um, with these cigar projects, we don't want to just – we could come out with one. I, I can tell you right now, I could come out with a cigar project every month. Literally, there's that many companies that want to do something with us. and But I don't want to do that. I don't want to just bang out cigar projects. I want to come up with you know really unique and different things that are interesting in the marketplace. So the projects that we're working on now that I I can't tell you about yet, but they're – you know, we have like four of them in the works, but these take a lot of time. In fact, one of the ones we're working on right now is so complicated it, that it, it takes the coordination of several companies to come together to, 
to make this cigar, and I don't mean cigar companies, but types of companies to come together to make this cigar. And when it hits, it's going to be really, really unique. And people are going to freak out because it's going to change the way people think about uh, cigar pairings and the way things go together. So we're super excited about that. Um, so, yeah, we've got like four of them in the works. Hopefully within the next you know, two years, those four projects will come out. So what we do, our whole thing is, is, is hey, let's take our time and make something that's really good, really, really good, like the dogma. I mean, it took a year, a year from the time we had that idea till the time it came out. It was exactly 365 days it took us. And you could bang these things out in a month or two if you wanted to, but we like trying to make something really good and really unique. You know, I want to give you some credit here because you're probably selling yourself short here. I've been very vocal saying I think the shop exclusive, this – you know, market's been saturated in the last couple of years. You've had three releases and they both sold out. Um, and they weren't like, you know, 10 by, I mean, you've had, I mean, these were, I would say significant uh, releases. So that, I think that's a testament to not only you, but as far as your community, um, because these things sold out and they sold out fast. Like you said, the dogma went like that. I mean, yeah, you know, what's would, cool about the, do the dogma uh, will thank you, by the way, um, what's cool about the dogma was, we they came in it came in two segments and the first segment was a real small there's like 200 bundles and that sold out the first day in a few hours and so the next segment we got was 450 bundles of dogma and we released it at midnight on a wednesday night midnight on a wednesday night now imagine that and the first uh 200 bundles sold in 4 minutes Four minutes, and by uh, an hour and a half, all 450 bundles were gone. So that was incredible. It was one of the fastest, <clears throat> if not the fastest, selling releases of its kind ever, probably. <laughs> and then the Sarsaparilla, we, we we went big. We did a thousand bundles, which is a lot for a, a like a community release. That's like twice the amount that a normal community release would be. And we sold 500 bundles in a day, and then it took about two months uh, to sell all of them. But uh, and now, you know, it's hard to get your hands on a sarsaparilla. People on the dojo are always, you know, hey, anybody got one? I'll trade for one, that kind of thing. So it's pretty exciting. <clears throat> Not too long ago, we saw a, uh, a bundle of Dogma on eBay for 350 bucks. Wait, you can sell cigars on eBay? Yeah, well, you know, you're not supposed to. So what you do is they sell it as an empty package. Yeah. And they, you know, they make it seem like there's not tobacco in there. I don't do it. I wouldn't do it. If I was going to sell it, I'd sell it at retail price. But I'm just saying the black market is out there. And is there a lot of buying, selling, and trading on the Cigar Dojo community? Not a lot of selling. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of giving. Like, uh I can't say it right now because there's a project we're working on. But there's a... Uh, a lot of people just give cigars away, cigar bombs. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of communities do that. We're going to be taking that to the next level shortly. And uh, that's an announcement I can't make quite yet. But I, I do have an announcement later I'll make uh, for you guys. But so, so guys, just out of their goodness of their heart, they just give cigars to other people. And uh, there's a lot of that that goes on. There's a lot of trading. Mm -hmm. But mainly it's just giving away. And then we have a thing called a PIF, which is a pay it forward. And that means like a guy will come on the dojo and he'll say, uh, who wants my cigars? And then the next poster will say, I want your cigars. Who wants my cigars? And pretty soon there's this whole long list, like 50 guys all in a row. And so they each give each other cigars as like a chain. Like this guy gives that guy, that guy gives the next guy, and the next guy gives. So that's why you call it pay it forward. And so stuff like that goes on in the dojo every day. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, really cool. I know, yeah, because forums, forums are its own. <coughs> excuse me. Forums are like its own animal, and <clears throat> I know a lot of people have mixed success. There's a lot of positive things, of course, um, that happen on cigar forums. Um, I've never been a big fan. Being in technology since I was seven, I just never been a big fan of forums. Um, but there are a lot of very successful cigar forums, and it's nice to see some of that spirit in 
you know, your technology as well, Eric, because, I, you know, I think it provides some balance as well. So I'm, I'm very anxious to see what you come up with next, actually. Yeah, you know, um, I actually, my history is in forums, and um, I've created some web forums out there that are still going to this day that are some of the biggest in the world, not about cigars. Yeah. And um, what are, what are uh, they on? Are they on web web design stuff or? Um, they're on topics such as uh, automobile racing, yep. uh, theology. Nice. Uh, we do have a, a a forum called I've Had That, which is about cigars, bourbon, and craft beer, mm -hmm. and that one's kind of fun. But the I think the biggest problem with forums, in my opinion, is it's such a delayed interaction. Yes. It's a delayed interaction, you know? And so that's the cool thing about the dojos. It's like this instant interaction, right. you know? Do you think for, I, I've seen forums kind of on the decline for a long time. And I think that, uh, of course, apps, you know, mobile applications on your, your smartphone or other tablets, such devices are really the future. Is that, I mean, right. we pretty much can put the nail in the coffin, right, with forums and say that apps are the future. And you've certainly proven that with Cigar Dojo. Yeah, and even with our, I've had that forum. We have a really slick app for it too. Yeah. So it's it 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 seems a lot like, you know, uh, a social media app when you're using it. Um, but do yeah, you, you're now, Eric. Do you develop the apps or do you work with the developers and design the apps? I work with developers. Um, I'm not a, a programmer myself. But so you I design do them. I mean that that is equally as uh, important and difficult of a skill as to be able to design it. Yeah, we, we, we do all the branding and marketing and how, this function and that function and right. how it works and everything. And, um, and so, yeah, that's how it works. And you're 100% you're right about the future. People use their phones to, right. to do what they do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Will, uh, a couple more questions for Eric. I want to get into trivia soon, so... We can, yeah, we, we can. Why don't we get more, in? We would do trivia, and then if we have yeah. time, we can we can talk hey, about wait, other things. Hey, wait! You guys want the big announcement? Yeah. Well, you know yeah. what? You know, do the big announcement before we do trivia. Sure. Yeah. Right. Sure. Let's do the big announcement right now because get this: we were gonna we were gonna shoot off this press release this morning. Uh, it's probably it, it might have just posted, right, Jordan? Uh, we were gonna do this press release this morning, but we decided to wait so that I could announce it on the show tonight. Oh, and you guys thank you very first much. First in the world. To uh, hear this announcement, so there's a new feature on the Dojo app, and it just is coming out today, just today, and uh, we're so excited about it because it's really interesting. It's different, and it's called Cigar Wars. Okay, and so uh, I'll show it. I'll show it here in a second, but let me just explain it first. So, Cigar Wars is a new feature in the Dojo. It's in the menu. Uh, it's not part of the social timeline. So you click on the menu and you go to Cigar Wars, and what you get is two images of a of different two different cigars, right? And you just click on the one that you think is better. So it's like this cigar versus this cigar. Which do you think is better? You click on it, and as soon as you click on it, you get a new battle comes up. Two different cigars, and then you click on the one you think is better. And what happens is there's a really sophisticated rating system that happens so like these cigars begin to get what's called a battle rating. And as users all over the world in the Dojo app will start clicking on these different cigars, it will begin to rank these cigars in order of the ones that people like the, like the best, right? Well, that, so, was like um, how that was like how Facebook got its start. Yeah, it's sort of like uh, it's like it's sort of like Tinder, but yeah. for cigars. What was that it, called? Uh, where before Facebook that he developed, hot or not, it, face mask. Yeah. It was like hot or not, right? Yeah, right. it's 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 almost exactly like that. So I'll show you real quick how this works. Uh, here's uh, here's my iPad here, and uh, I'll bring up the dojo. So here we got the dojo going on my iPad, right? And, but if you go up in your in the menu up here, I'll try to do this. There's Cigar Wars. Can you see that? It's like the third. Uh, sort of. Yeah, okay. Okay. Sorry. It's tough it to read the text. That's okay. Okay. I got it on mine. All right. So I'll click uh, Cigar Wars. And so, boom, here we go. Here we got a battle. So we've got a, uh, a Herrera Esteli Lancero versus the, uh, what is that? 
Oh, that's the uh, Ortega uh, Cubeo. So which which do you like better? Oh, Herrera Esteli Lancero. All right, so I'll just click yeah. that. Boop. Sorry, Eddie. Yes. And then, Sorry, and no no disrespect to anyone. Yeah. No, so that's kind of bad. We shouldn't do this on the air, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so then you get a new battle, and you just click the one you think is good, right? So you just keep doing this, and this what's is cool. cool is you get this rating down here, the top ten cigars. Each cigar has its oh, own yeah. page, and and then you can. What's really cool is you can go to the leaderboard. I'll click the menu and go to the leaderboard. We'll go to the uh, top 100 here. Oops, I didn't click this that. This is right. like addicting. I, right. I actually have it up. I'm like. <laughs> so here's the top 100 right now, as it stands. Now remember, this changes like all day long today. Yeah. Uh, we've been kind of beta testing this with a few mm -hmm. dojo users, and the the rankings change all the time. But right now, the Beheke is number one. Nice. Monte Cristo, number two, is number two. Don Ronaldo, we just talked about, yeah. that's three. So you can go through here. And then here's what's really cool. It gets even better. You can go to uh, cigars by category. And now you can see, you can find out the top, say, 25 Maduro cigars. Nice. Or you can find out the top 25 natural cigars. Or you can look at the top, say, how about the top 25 affordable cigars? So right now the... Flor de Crocier 512 is mm -hmm. number one. And uh, look at that, Sarsaparilla, number two. And then you can look at, uh, how about we look at Honduran cigars? The original uh, One Shot, One Kill is leading. Mm -hmm. So these ratings, it's really cool. This rating system is really sophisticated because let's say two cigars come up for battle, <clears throat> right? And you have one cigar that's really, really good. It's leading. It's, it's Maybe it's one of the top cigars. And you it comes up against an underdog well if the if the uh favorite cigar wins it just takes a tiny portion from the underdog and gives it to its battle rating but if the underdog is to win it takes a big chunk so what happens is it's a self-correcting right uh rating system similar to what like chess players this is the rating system is based on how chess players get ranked globally mm -hmm. and then right now we have about a little over 100 cigars entered into it. And uh, that means there's over 5,000 battle combinations. And every week we'll add new cigars to the, mm -hmm. to the battle. And eventually there'll be, you know, <clears throat> thousands in this thing. And we think that this rating system is actually going to be one of the more accurate rating systems in the world. Because if you think about it, when you normally see cigar ratings... And it has this number, you know, 88 or whatever, 92. What, it's an arbitrary number based on the, the cigar website or blog or magazine. And it's also based on those guys' opinion of that cigar. Well, this will be a rating system based on cigars' head-to-head -head performance. And so the rating system itself will become extremely accurate over time. And there'll be times when we might reset the ratings and, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, a million things we can do with this thing. But so it's called Cigar Wars. It's only in the Cigar Dojo app. Check it out. It's probably the most addicting way to waste time in the world. Mm -hmm. You can sit there <laughs> while you're smoking and you just click on your favorite cigar over and over. It's, well, what's it's great awesome. is <clears throat> what I love about it is it crowdsources the cigar rating. Right, so it's not just what one or two people think, like you said. Right, right. It's crowdsourcing the rating, which I, I think is well, really cool. When it I look at this exactly too, this. I'm Go seeing ahead. this kind of as like a you know the Billboard Top 40. Mm. Right. That's I'm kind of seeing this as like it's crowdsourced that's used the input and it's creating something that's probably and I I've, I've thought about a Billboard Top 40 for cigars. I just wouldn't know how to implement it, and you've come up with a way to implement it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And and then yeah. one one last thing about it is when you're looking at the leaderboard. If you do click on any given cigar, uh, then at that point you can get all you know the info about that particular cigar. You can't really see it on here, but uh, it tells you the binder and all that sort of a little description. And we're redoing all these. We're taking pictures of every cigar. We're rewriting all the descriptions. So everything in here is fresh and new, and we're super excited about it. 
<laughs> awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So that's the big announcement. Tomorrow we're going to officially announce it to the world. Uh, but tonight we wanted to just announce it only on Stogie Geeks. Cool. We Thank you so much, Eric. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Sure you check out that the is Star awesome. Jojo that's app. a great job. Great job. <clears throat> that's fun. So uh, speaking of fun, one of the things we started playing around with, Eric, um, yeah. was uh, trivia. And, and I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge trivia person, but I tell you what, what got me addicted was we did a, a 10-year anniversary show for my computer security uh, podcast called Security Weekly. And okay. um, uh, all of the uh, most of the members came here in studio and we had a big party and we had a bartender and we got really drunk and we paid mm -hmm. w played what's called Hacker Jeopardy. Um, and so they're all, you know, hacker related questions in different categories. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. And so we're working on some type of Hacker Jeopardy, you know, for the Stogie Geeks. In the meantime, I've <laughs> come up with these uh, a similar a, a, a kind of an offshoot model where I ask people the same 20 questions mm. and <clears throat> I score them and then we compare your score. So you're actually playing against um, a few different people. Uh, Stokey Santa. Okay. Dave Garofalo. Right. Uh, Todd Scola, who is the manager next door at the Havana Cigar Club. John Carney, who is the national sales manager for La Flor Dominicana. Uh, Glenn Loop, who is the president of CRA. Uh, Will Cooper, who we all know very well. Never uh, heard of. Now, Will's <laughs> scores are kind of skewed because Will actually helped me come up with one question. So one out of the 20 questions Will came up with. So we can almost – I don't want to exclude you, Will, from it, but um, you do I have, got three wrong. I got three of the other 19 yeah. wrong. <laughs> Will does have one of the top scores. Um, essentially, I think he's tied with Dave Garofalo uh, at about an 88 uh, or 85. You know, we, we kind of prorate – Will's rating because he did come up with one of the questions. Did Will get the question wrong that he came up with? Uh, I think he did. So I maybe that's a good point. Uh, and uh, Dave Burke from the Cigar Jukebox uh, podcast. So okay. um, right now, Dave Garofalo is in the lead. Um, in second place is John Carney and uh, Stogie Santa in third place. So we're going to score you uh, against everyone else who's played this. So are you ready okay. to play 20 questions with Stogie Geeks? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. When did Connecticut Broadleaf first appear in the cigar market? Is it A, 1920s, B, 1820s, C, 1950s, or D, the last time that Will had hair? <laughs> Wait, isn't that the same as the 1920s? Pretty much. Is that <laughs> pretty much. It is. It is. You get a point for either of those if that were, in fact, the right answer. I'm not telling you whether it is or not, but... I'm going to go with uh, D, the last time Will had hair. Okay. Um, I'll give you the answers. We're going to have to change these questions eventually. We gave the answers on the anniversary show. Um, judging by your answer to the first question, you did not watch that segment where we gave no. out the answers. So, Because <laughs> you are incorrect. It is actually the 1820s. Ah. Oh, yes. Uh, the phrase, close but no cigar, originated Ooh. from A, Bill Clinton's presidency, <laughs> B, a cigar being a popular carnival game prize, C, Hollywood movies, or D, what the FDA has been saying? <laughs> I'm going to go with B, uh, a popular carnival prize. You are correct. So your, the answer would be you get a cigar, right? If you got yes. a carnival game prize, you would get a cigar. Right. Isn't that cool that they used to give away cigars in the carnival? Isn't that awesome, right? <laughs> I wish they still did that. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might go to the carnival. That's Get right. arrested now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fidel Castro got his own brand in 1966, which was called A. Monte Cristo, B. Castro Cigars, C. Cohiba, or D. Partagas. Ooh. Um. I know it's not Monte Cristo, so it's got to be uh, – I'll just go with Castro's Cigars. It's actually C. Cohiba. It was ah. created in 1966 for Fidel Castro. Gosh. Uh, where does the term stogie come from? Mm. Is it A, George Burns invented it, B, Cuba, C, it's Spanish for cigar – 
or D, Pennsylvania manufacturers who used Conestoga or covered wagons? Jeez, that's a tough one. I'll go with D. Yes, you are correct. It Shit. is D. Pennsylvania manufacturers did use the term Conestoga uh, okay. for covered wagons that they used to actually deliver cigars. We, it's, I sound like really smart knowing this. It's only because we researched the term Stogie because <laughs> our name is Stogie Geeks, so we felt that we should know where the term comes from. Yeah. That, was a, that was a wild guess on my part. That was a good guess. That was uh, a good guess. A, a thousand tobacco seeds can fit inside of what? Is it A, a pint glass? Is it B, nestled in my chest hair? Mm. Is it C, a thimble? Or is it D, a 55-gallon drum? <laughs> I don't know much about your chest hair, but I'm going to go with the thimble. You are correct. A thousand cigar seeds can, in fact, fit inside of a thimble. <laughs> what does the term hecho a mano mean? Is it A, man hands, B, handmade, C, manly men, or D, Hector's man? <laughs> Let's see. A or B, I would say B. Yes, it is B, handmade. Yeah. The Cuban embargo banning the importation of cigars and other goods from Cuba was put into effect in which year? Is it A, 1962, B, 1961, C, mm. 1960, or D, 1992? Um, nineteen sixty-two. You are correct. It's somewhat of a trick question because the first embargoes were put in place in nineteen sixty, and they were later amended in nineteen ninety-two. So, very good. The first successful commercial crop in the U.S. of tobacco was cultivated in sixteen twelve in which state? Is it A. Connecticut, B. Rhode Island? C, Virginia, or D, Pennsylvania? Ooh, uh, I'm going to go with Virginia. You are correct. It was, in fact, Virginia. And if, if I was really smart, I could remember the, the farmer's name. I do remember that they had to incentivize people to start growing things like corn and other vegetables because tobacco was so profitable that the other types of farming of, you know, vegetables and fruits actually declined. That's how popular tobacco was. Mm. In 1994, the Cuban government created this organization to handle the global distribution and marketing of Cuban cigars. Is it A, General Cigar, B, Cohiba, C, Habanos SA, or D, Swedish Match? Let's go with C. Yes, you are correct. Habanos SA. In what year did Davidoff cease production of cigars in Cuba? Mm. Is it A, 1961, B, 1966, C, 1989, or D, 1991? Let's go with D, 1991. You are correct. That was the one I came up with, by the way. Yes, that was, hey. that was in fact, Will's... <laughs> Okay, so that was uh, all about cigar history. Okay. The uh, next 10 questions are all about uh, tobacco plants. Okay. And they get a little more difficult. Oh, geez. Cigar tobacco plants require how many hours of sunlight per day? <laughs> Is it A, four hours, B, six hours, uh. C, eight hours, or D, 10 hours? Um... Let's go with uh, let's go with D ten hours. That is actually incorrect. Ah. It is C eight hours. Most people do miss this question, Eric, which is interesting. I, I think Dave Garofalo wanted to dispute this question. He was very upset that he got it wrong. It <clears throat> the question and answer comes from uh, Tobacconist University from the Tobacconist Handbook, uh, and it's actually in there in the first like. I don't know, 10 or 12 pages, there's like a little block, and it says tobacco plants require eight hours of sunlight. So what do they know? What do they know, right? <laughs> <laughs> the lowest priming of a tobacco leaf is called what? Or tobacco plant, I should say. Is it A, Lajero, B, Viso, C, Seiko, 
or D, Volato? Hmm. Uh, the lowest will go with D, Volato. You are correct. A cured tobacco leaf is brown because what has been replaced by carotene? Is it A, chlorophyll, B, cholesterol, C, caloric acid, or D, pigment? Uh, A, chlorophyll. That is correct. What is the country of origin of the Cameroon wrapper? Is it A, Nicaragua, B, Indonesia, C, Cameroon, or D, Ecuador? Uh, B. That is incorrect. Cameroon is grown in the country of Cameroon in ah. Africa. You should go back and watch our segment on Cameroon wrappers, Eric. <laughs> <clears throat> to create a Maduro wrapper, you need what? A, a Maduro seed plant. B, to use the right fermentation process. C, a Maduro priming. Or D, black paint. <laughs> B. <laughs> yes. To use the right fermentation process, uh, it's one of the biggest cigar uh, misconceptions out, out there, as I'm sure you're well aware of, Eric, right? Um, yes. People think a lot of different things about Maduro, but it is a fermentation process where they heat the tobacco. Uh, in the top most priming of a to oh, the top most priming of a tobacco plant is called what? Is it A, Corona, B, Lajero, C, Viso, or D, Velado? Uh, let's go with B. That is incorrect. It's actually Corona. Mm. Somewhat misleading question. Sense. Some some plants uh, do consider Lajero as the top most priming. Others will call it Corona. So I probably need to clarify on that question. But you still got that it make, wrong. That makes sense, though. Corona being the out. Uh, yeah, so very, very small, small leaves I, at the top. I should have figured that out. This type of plant was developed in the 1930s by Diego Rodriguez. Named after his birthplace in the Vuleta Abajo region, it was the premier wrapper for Cuban cigars until the 1990s. Is it A. Habano, B. Criollo, C. Corojo, or D. Piloto Cubano? Hmm. Boy. Uh... I'm going to go with the, tonight, the theme of tonight's show, Corojo. Yes, you are correct. It was, in fact, Corojo. Will, you've got 10 more questions in the next segment about Corojo. You better brace oh. yourself for that. Oh, boy. Uh, primarily used for filler, this Dominican tobacco plant derives part of its name from the Spanish word for aroma. Is it A, Piloto Cubano, B, Olor Dominicano, C, San Vicente, or D, Chibao Valley? Oof. God, that's it. I don't know. Uh, I will say... Uh, Do you want to phone a friend? No. <laughs> 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 uh, run those by me real quick one more time. Sure. Piloto Cubano, Olor Dominicano, San Vicente, or Chibao Valley? I'll go with uh, Alor de Dominicano. You are correct. Alor is Spanish for aroma. Picked or prime tobacco leaves are hung in barns, also known as casas de tabac, for approximately how many days before moving to the next stage? Is it A, 30 days, B, 7 days, C, 50 days, or D, 60 days? Uh, I'm going to say... Uh, 30 days. Uh, it's incorrect. It's uh, 50 days. Oh. That is man. according to Tobacconist University. They don't know nothing. <laughs> in the first phase of fermentation, leaves are bunched together in gavilas, or bunches of five or more leaves, then laid in short piles about one to three feet tall, which are called A, burrows, B, pilones, C, piles, or D, mounds. B. Yes, you are correct. Drum roll, please, and your score is 70%. Hey! You did good. You did very good. You did very well, tying John Carney from the floor, Dominicana, uh, hey, who yes. I like to point out and poke fun at because he got one of the Dominican 
tobacco questions wrong, and he works for the floor, Dominicana. <laughs> Love you, John. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> when he gave the wrong answer. I was like, oh, man, he's in so much trouble. <laughs> I did better at that than I thought I was going to do. You no, that was good. good. Yeah, you did good, dude. You did good. Thank you. Probably better than Will's going to do on my Corolla question. I have no <laughs> idea what this you didn't, say, you didn't say there was going to be a test. <laughs> I, I know. Garoppolo there's going to be a test. <laughs> um, <coughs> so, Will, <coughs> excuse me, closing questions for Eric. Um. Yeah, Eric, Um. I guess we talked a little – Um. As far as um, right now, standout cigar, you know, you, you mentioned the the, uh, the Warped, obviously, the highest rated score. A- anything else stand out this year? Yeah, I mean, a big one for us, uh, we started smoking them in San Antonio, is the Flor de De Crocier. I know that's a crazy name, right? It's Flor de De, de Crocier. De Crocier. So there's De De in the middle of the name, De De. Uh, that is a six dollar cigar. Comes in a can. It's phenomenal. If you smoke the Flor de Crocier, de, de Crocier five twelve, next to a Cohiba Siglo, you'd have a hard time telling that one of them was a six dollar cigar and one of them was a fifteen dollar cigar. It is a phenomenal cigar for six bucks, and it's the only cigar I think in my smoking history that I just don't get sick of. I mean, like, almost every cigar, even cigars that I like, after a while I get tired of smoking them. But that 512 is one that I can smoke every day. It's just out of this world, lights out, one of my favorite cigars of all time. Uh, So that one really stands out for me this year. And then when we got to uh, the show – he had the Corona Gorda size, which is even better. We were smoking the torpedoes in San Antonio, and then we got our hands on the Corona Gorda size, and they were even better. So if 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 you want to spend six dollars in a really really good way, uh, to me that you can't get a better value in the cigar world than that uh, Flor de de. Crocier five twelve. I know Will, you you've had that cigar, right? Yep, we've both had it. Um, mm-hmm. and it's done very well here. Yeah, that's a good. I love that stick. It's got a salty, savory kind of flavor on the tobacco itself in your mouth, and then the smoke is just so flavorful. And 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 believe me, I'm a big fan of De Crochet all along. But this cigar <laughs> has the best draw and burn of any De Crochet that I've had. It's just absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, that one stands out. The is a, uh, a sponsor here on the Stogie Geeks. So we smoked a lot of their cigars. They're all very good. I have to say across yeah. the board, they make they make some great cigars. Yeah, we started a couple of years ago. I started introducing them to Stogie Geeks, and they've all done pretty well. So, yeah, they, they're good cigars. Yeah, and let's see. What else? Um, what are some other cigars, Jordan, that we've had that we really – besides we mentioned the El Wawense already. Uh, the, uh, we're real excited about the Matilda Oscura. Um, yeah, I agree. That's a, that's a, I don't know if Paul's had it yet, but it, it is in the running for one of my top spots right now. Yeah, another really good stick that I didn't know if I was going to like when I first tried it was the Camacho American Barrel Aged, but that cigar is fantastic all the way. That's mm. another one that I can nub because, man, it's good all the way to the very end. I, I really, really like that cigar a lot. And um, I like this year's Oktoberfest from Quesada. Uh, was was another good cigar, uh, and and uh, what's that? Oh yeah, that Davidoff Oscurio. Yes. Uh, that Brazilian was really good. And the Robusto, I really liked it. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those ones where uh, the the size matters a lot. Big if time. you get the Robusto, it's fantastic. Yeah, we agree. Yep, agree hundred yeah. percent. Right, I got I got one more question along these lines. Um, cause I love how you, are you doing the award show this year again? Cause I love the award show on smoke night live. Yeah, we'll be doing that. I, I, uh, I'm not sure the date it'll be right around the first of the year. Um, and you know, our award show is a little different. We, uh, we have, a uh, a pretty tight criteria. The cigar has to be $10 or less. So a $10 and 99 cent stick could make it. And, and, and it has to be a wide release. It can't be limited. 
You, you know, we, well, we, our idea with our award show is let's, let's make an award show because there's a lot of award shows and there's a lot of good ones. Um, and there's a lot of awards that get handed out by magazines and stuff. But a lot of times it's not cigars that were from that year. And it's also cigars that are hard to get. Maybe some of them are Cubans and stuff. And that doesn't mean that those are bad cigars. But I want to make a list, a top ten list, that guys could take into their local brick and mortar and actually buy uh, at a reasonable price. So that's the idea behind our award show. And we've already been working pretty hard on that show, uh, even though it's a few months away. But uh, we've been you know, narrowing down the field and trying to figure out what's what. And it's not my opinion. It's not just my opinion. We, there's a group of us that get together and uh, we, we work it out to, to get you know, the, the top cigar. Last year, uh, the uh, Nat Sherman Epoca won. Uh, the year before that, it was the uh, Moya Ruiz La Higada Habana. And so those are cigars that were affordable and fantastic and relatively easy to get. And then our very, very first year was the Espinosa Habana, which they just re-released Blended. with a, a mm. really great, really great looking band. It's an awesome looking band. And the blend has been tweaked a little. I'm aging some now. I've had a couple already. Uh, so, so every year, that's, that's sort of our strategy is to come up with cigars that were released that year that guys can get their hands on. Nice. <clears throat> well, Eric... Thank you very much for coming back on the Stoey Geek Show. Uh, everyone should check out the Cigar Dojo app and uh, <clears throat> the new Cigar Wars functionality, which looks really awesome. Yeah, I've been I've been still clicking on these. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's number one right now? Will? I don't know, but I warp moved up to number two since I've been clicking. So yeah, there you go. you're influencing the ratings, Will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so we're excited about that. And hey, I want to thank you guys for having us on the show. Uh, this is always a blast. I, I love Stogie Geeks. Uh, I love Cigar Coop. By the way, if you want the, the best news, the breaking news, you only go to Cigar Coop. And you can get that in the Dojo app, too. That's our, we bring in the news from Cigar Coop into the Dojo because he does it better than anybody in the world. So that's why we do that. And so we're really appreciative of, uh, Will, all the work that you do and put into that because it keeps us up to date. When I want to find out what's going on, somebody will mention a cigar. The first place I go is Coop's website to find out what the deal is because, man, you're you're right on the ball every day. There's something new on your site, and I I I can't tell you how much I I go there as much as I go to the dojo probably. So I appreciate that. Thank Will's you very much. Will's got the finger on the pulse of the cigar industry. So. He does, Thank man. He does. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks so much, Eric. With okay. that, we're gonna Thanks, take a guys. short break. Thank you. We're going to take a short break, come back, and uh, do our Debonair Ideal segment for this evening, where Will is going to be quizzed on the Corojo tobacco plants and wrappers and such. Uh, they're also used for, for fillers as well. I don't want to give too much away, but you're going to learn a whole – in this quizzing process, I find that I learn a lot, and the people that take the quizzes learn a lot. So we're going to get some education on the Corojo wrapper. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. 